am Andres Eichstadt. I'm the creative director at Staging Studio. And I want to introduce you to Kira Green. She is my um, realtor here in Providence, Rhode Island. I thought it would be really great to share with you guys um, what it's been like to stage my own home. To and then also why I chose Kira. A lot of you are also agents. So we want to talk about how to be um, that top producing agent in your area. So I want to tell you the story of meeting Kira. Um, she had this super cool listing. Um, it's this old carriage house, but it was clearly something that you would renovate. It was clearly for total gut renovation. Yeah. But she had staged it. She hired a stager and had it staged really beautifully. Anyway, so my husband and I went to this uh, listing and there were, there was a line out the door. There were um, people every few minutes going in and we were just so impressed with, first of all, how many people she had gotten to this um, listing and then also how beautiful it looked, even though clearly it was going to be renovated. So I wanted to ask you, Kira, what made you stage this home that needed so much work? The house itself, in my opinion, the layout was going to be totally changed. Mm -hmm. um, so when I met with my stagers, my recommendation was that we shouldn't be defining these rooms for buyers. And it was through that really creative dialogue that the idea popped up to just stage one of the most amazing spaces inside the carriage house. So generally people are staging whole houses, but I also wanna say that that's why you have to have a good relationship with a listing agent if you're a stager and as a listing agent with a stager, vice versa, because those creative conversations about what buyers are looking for and how to appeal to buyers, that is a really fluid conversation that ends up creating a better product. So we staged this one large room in the carriage house. And as a result, um, we had a multiple offers on that property. I'm sure it, we were so tempted to put an offer in ourselves. Yeah, so we, we created, um, even though people who do renovation, because anyone there clearly was someone who would have had to renovate it, you know, you shouldn't just consider that that person has all the vision they need. So providing one space with vision is um, creating value added to your client. I love that, yeah. Another thing that you did that was impressive to me and one of the reasons why we ended up choosing you was that you were there at this um, listing weekend, yes. I think, a lot of times agents are letting a, an associate yep. show the home or not, you know, just letting the, the buyer's agent show the home. Um, but you were there and you had some, some great ideas about how you would renovate that home. That's Talk to me about that process. So why is that so important to you? So when we talk about staging, we talk about staging in the traditional sense, but what people are not talking about is setting the stage. And setting the stage is, as a real estate agent, as a listing agent, thinking about how you're gonna bring value to this property and how you're gonna greet your buyer, whether you have a line out the door or only two buyers showing up, what, what is the value add that you're bringing by opening that door and how are you bringing the person through the house and creating a vision for them. And if the vision's already created, explaining how they can move in, whether they have little kids or grown kids, no matter what someone's age is, you have to have your story and you also have to know the house intimately in order to create that story. So for me, as a, as a listing agent, if I'm not present, um, I, I'm the one you hired. So I'm going to be present and I'm going to create that add a value to the buyer. And really it's the impression that you give off. Um, 
it sounds corny, but you can have um, a, a showing that really is negative based on the person not being able to answer questions or you simply not having a smile on your face. And in a seller's market, things are moving quickly and you really want your agent to bring the value of your property up by how they show it. So that's why I'm always present. In setting the stage on how you're showing this house, I mean, it could be as minor from, you don't go to the first floor and go down to the basement. You know, and if you're wondering why agents don't want you to do that, why would you go to the generally ugliest part of the house before you saw all the beauty? And you know, and by the way, the last place you talk when you're talking about the house, go back into the kitchen. I mean, that is just a flow of a showing that can create an impression. And it sounds, it actually is not that calculated because it's pretty easy to do. If I find myself talking in a basement with a buyer, I'm like, what are we doing in here? Let's go upstairs. And I generally, they follow me into the kitchen, which generally kitchens sell homes. So why wouldn't you end there? So I think uh, knowing the market is number one when you're showing a house and not just knowing the intimate details of the house you're selling, but knowing the intimate details of the houses in the price range of the house you're selling. Um, a, a buyer running through would see the bathrooms and, and by the way, they're gorgeous. So a buyer's going to be like, wow, those bathrooms are so beautiful. But it's my job to say, well, there's three of them on the second floor. That's really rare. For example, this property and this property which sold for more only had two. And that, that is invaluable to you as a, as a seller to have that. Truly, um, the intimacy between you and your agent is really important when it comes to them having the details to be able to speak like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you guys are a young family and you have young, adorable girls. But, you know, talking to you about, listen, someone might buy your house, their kids might be in college. And, mm -hmm you know, those toys are cute, but let's create a zone. So I always, and it's not just with you. I mean, I do this with all my clients. Let's create a zone where there are your kids stuff, but in every single picture, we don't see kids stuff. And I see that with stagers too. Like there'll be a living room and it's beautifully staged and they thought it would look cute to have a few kids photos or our kids books or a little stuffed animal. And if that carries through the house, then the person looking at the photos their kids are grown up and they can't see themselves in your house, right? Mm -hmm. And the same goes for if you are completely stripped of any youth in your house, then a young family is going to say, well, this is too formal for me, mm -hmm. right? So we tell older buyer, older sellers, you got to take those drapes down. You got to take those heavy drapes down. And we tell younger sellers, you know, toys are great. You, you're living in the house, but you cannot have reminders and cues of in every single room about how old you are. You know, we take out photos to depersonalize ourselves. Well, there's also a lot of visual cues in what you have um, in staging that go beyond, you know, photographs and religious symbols. I love that idea that it's not it's not just staging, but it's setting the stage. So yep. we talk in staging a lot about um, who the target buyer is and, and staging with that um, in mind, but I think also using language to set the stage. Yep. You wrote this beautiful script that gave a little bit of the history of the home. And um, so a version of that was in the, it was like the, the narration. Of the it video. is, and it'll be in the video that we released tonight. And I think that goes back again to the partnership that a, that a, a stager and a listing agent and a seller should have. You know, we didn't just come up with all that stuff. Um, we talked to you about what are the things that, um, you know, are important to you about your house. And then we brought our own information in. And the end result is a description that really um, captures the spirit of your house. So it kind of goes down to every detail when you're, when you're listing a house. And um, I always say, you know, it, it, it sounds silly, but it's not just like hanging up a sign on outside your house. Those agents are not agents that get referred so agents should hook up with stagers, create those positive relationships, or can take a, a course with you and go the extra mile because in the end, you'll sell the house quicker. Mm -hmm. Your seller's going to love you 
and you get referred. Yep. Yeah. Um, I thought you did a really beautiful job or the copywriter did of not, you know, I think sometimes I look, I read so many MLS descriptions. Yeah. They're over the top flowery. Again, when we're talking about staging, it's everything. It's every impression, every word. Typos kill me when I see those on MLS. But I took his script and I had to edit it down for MLS. So rather than just writing the sloppy MLS description, I took the same spirit of his script. We were, we were limited to a certain number of words. So that way there's consistency in how we're presenting the house. I saw, kept seeing you on TikTok and <laughs> you know, the only agent in Providence, I do believe on TikTok. And I thought, um, you know, that really set you apart. And I know that stagers here are, I give a lot of talks on social media to stagers yep. and it seems very overwhelming. And it, they're, you know, just to do Instagram feels like a lot, but yeah. to, to go on out on that limb and yeah. TikToks. Well, having t uh, teenage children helps because um, I kind of saw what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And also following top agents. I follow top agents in really large metro areas. I mean, we're in Providence. We're, you know, a second or third tier smaller city. Um, seeing what they were doing. And my partner, my business partner and I, Michael, we just decided to go for it. And the, the first thing when you notice with TikTok is we were wondering if we were going to be, I don't know how to say this, but is it too jokey? Do people not realize like we're, we're actually really smart too? Like, you know, we wouldn't become, we're, we're the number one team um, in Rhode, small team in Rhode Island. And I don't want to not be taken seriously because I'm dancing on TikTok. And I do dance on TikTok, but we were talking about it earlier. You know, it's a really personal job. And if you can't be yourself and sell the house with that kind of, you know, love and exuberance, then, you know, I don't know what kind of job you're going to do. So for me, it was just basically showing um, clients houses in a really fun way and people have responded to it. And if you're selling something, you have to find a unique way to do it and a way to do it that's positive and happy because buying a house can be extremely stressful. And so if you can take that stress out of it by kind of bringing a little levity or beauty, it's a way to make it a little more fun. But on the flip side, it's actually an amazing marketing tool. I think that's totally the same thing for stagers is that we need to embrace um, social media. Yes. Um, just so yes. you can I would love to see more stagers on social media. I would love stagers to, you know, use social media's ability, especially on TikTok, to do a split screen. You could show what it used to look like or what it's looked like now. And also, like, what is your personality as a stager? I mean, especially if you're selling yourself, not just to sellers, but also listing agents. Like, listing agents need to know who you are. You know, because yeah. you, you're going to be working intimately with this person, show your personality, show your work. And yes, it could be daunting at the beginning, but once you get rolling, you know, get a few videos up a week and you'll see it's not that hard. Yes. And people want to do business with people that they feel like they know and social yes. media is that. Um, so we actually at Staging Studio have um, a social media template package to make it a little bit easier. We've made it so much easier for you to do that. I want to talk about one of the design trends that yes, we- Yes, let's do it. Um, so this house has some extra bedrooms. And yes, it does. Um, in fact, it technically has seven bedrooms. Yeah. But you said that we should only claim six. <laughs> yeah. So let's, you know, going back to staging, you know, staging is more than traditional staging. It's like looking at a floor plan and staging your floor plan. Mm -hmm. So what I said to you is that people need office space right now. Let's show them less bedrooms and more office space because you have, you know, generally two parents working from home and sometimes extended family who needs an office space. And then it was your idea to talk about your Zoom room. 
And that was just brilliant because Providence in general is considered a Zoom town. We're a Zoom city because we're getting larger metro areas that are coming here because they're larger metros in Boston and New York are very connected to Providence, but people can work from here and commute to Boston or take a train to New York City. So if people are moving here from these larger areas because they can Zoom, why not have a Zoom room? So that I just obviously embraced that idea and we have a Zoom room. Which is something I would necessarily say if you didn't also have an office. Staging is to give people vision where there is none. So if we had had that room stage as a bedroom and I said, you can zoom from this room, that would not have been the same impact. So in our staging, we labeled the floor plan a zoom room. It's in our script that it's a Zoom room. We have photos of our Zoom room. So that is staging on every level of lifting a house. Speaking of that, I think we're gonna maybe give people a little um, tour of the house. So I am um, gonna show you the what the Zoom room actually looks like here. Um, so if you had just taken pictures of it, you would have thought, okay, that's like a lot of junk. Um, we've got bar stools and all of that, but um, with giving it the context and labeling it, I think it, it does definitely help and has created some buzz about the house. Um, and I gotta say that it's not, the most beautiful hall room in my home. Actually, it's probably the least beautiful room in my home, um, but it's quiet. You have these two double doors before you get to the rest of the house. So it is where I um, do a lot of my Zoom since my husband's downstairs doing his calls and my kids are running around. Um, but here is my office. And this is where a lot of the staging studio stuff happens. Um, we have two desks there for when Debbie Boggs, our co-founder is up here. And last year, of course, um, the rest of the team did work from my house. Um, oh, I'll show you the, we do have a bedroom up here. I'll show you this real quick. Now this is um, one thing we talk about how important it is to give the photographer notes um, about certain shots that you want them to take. So. Um, the photographer wanted to just take the shot from here, but I didn't feel like that showed the room the best. So a shot from here, I thought, um, did better. Can you tell the difference there? Yeah. I like that shot better. Um, yeah. It's, it's just, um, important to kind of think through the shots um, for the photographer, sometimes they could use some notes. And photographers don't necessarily have all day too. So it's nice if you tell them, you know, this, this would really work for me and there's nothing wrong with expressing your opinion. Yeah. So, um, I'm gonna have to like mute our <laughs> screen so that we're not, um, in echoing each other here, but, uh, this is my, little hallway and up to the third floor. So this is our, my kids playroom. And um, one thing we do talk about in our training is how valuable um, square footage is, right? So if we're, this is a huge bean bag here. And if the house is several hundred dollars per square foot, this bean bag is taking up like, who knows how much money of uh, square footage. So Kira's actually taking this bean bag um, to her daughter when she leaves. So we'll get that out of our house. Um, but let's see. So somebody was asking about storing stuff for um, pictures. We were just jamming things into this closet, but then we're going to have showing. So we did have to kind of clear that out and make it look a little bit more presentable for this weekend. Um, let's see, this is my kid's bathroom. And so 
Um, we don't have a shower curtain in real life and we're not gonna put a shower curtain up. I think uh, that's fine because it shows how pretty your tile is. Yeah, I did a little different um, pattern on the tile here. So um, this is my daughter's bedroom and you know, it's pink, that's not ideal, but since we have so much um, extra space, it's, it's fine to have a pink room. And can I just talk about that with photos? So for example, um, you know, that is a stronger color and I can understand people who are staging saying, you know, why do you have a pink bedroom? Showing that photo just once is perfect because you're just showing that you have children and that's a cute child space. It's not gonna define the whole house. And that's an example of, of something you don't need to change. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. So now I am in our Airbnb. Um, for those of you that have been following Staging Studio for a while, you may have seen this Airbnb. Um, we do have a course uh, that talks about how to style Airbnbs. Um, this is a functioning Airbnb that my husband and I run. You know, that goes back to setting the stage of the house is that it's important if there is that extra income um, potential to really point that out and um, factor that into the list price. But there's a little laundry here. We have <laughs> um, built laundry up here, which is a huge factor um, for just functionality of a space, I would say. Especially um, so nice. Coffee. You don't see that at all, right? So this is my little dressing area and my bathroom. And we did have, oof, I'm barefoot. <laughs> Radiant heat feels so nice on my toes right now. Um, <laughs> So I did, I'll be honest, I had like a shelving thing behind here. Um, and that was something that Kira did recommend. So I staged this little area um, instead of the shelving unit. Sometimes when we, we see supplemental shelving, it means that the space there is not enough. So when it, whether I'm working with someone who has a lot of jackets in the front hall or someone who has a bathroom with a supplemental storage tower, I always tell them to remove it because it gives the appearance that what is there is not sufficient. And um, when you're staging a home, you don't wanna ever give that appearance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my husband is in the dining room. <laughs> I'm gonna go in, I'll give you a little tour, but I'm gonna be very quiet. So pretty. All right, so um, yeah, I staged those shelves a little bit, um, and we're now in the kitchen. This is my living room and kitchen. We talked about how we moved the kitchen um, from the back of the house, and um, that's been something that's been so functional for my family to um, be able to use the space as one big open concept space. I just want to thank you for um, having me be a part of this. And I think maybe we can continue this idea that, you know, listing agents and stagers really need to get tight um, and be partners in, in getting a home sold. So anyway, thank you so much. I'm going to log off. Kira, thank you so much for doing this. It's so valuable to hear um, an agent's voice. Um, as a well, anytime. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks, guys. Bye.